and uh, ultimately that's my rule of thumb is that uh, probably probably best not to put things in your penis in in the hole of your penis uh, the you know the H-O-L-E not the W H O. Don't put things in the entirety of your penis, or even a little bit of your penis. Just don't. Uh, so that's something I've learned. Rule of thumb: don't. Best probably not do that. Uh, you know, and we learn these things the hard way, don't we? Eh? <laughs> Always the. With the. You know, because sometimes you get a bit. Uh, <clears throat> oh, a uh, f- fun fact for the day. Here we go. Here's, here's one. Here's a fact that's fun for you for, for the for today. Uh, I looked up because I was intrigued, somewhat uh, curious, you might say, about my sexuality, among other things. But <laughs> no, uh, but in particular on this occasion, I was curious about the term the rule of thumb. And where the bloody hell it originated from? What's the etymology of the phrase, the rule of thumb? I don't know if etymology technically applies to phrases and idioms as much as it does words themselves. But, you know, eh, we'll take it anyway. Um, so I was curious, I looked it up. <laughs> oh, God. I, I got quite the chuckle out of... Uh, the uh, where it uh, <clears throat> where it came from supposedly, <clears throat> which is the incorrect way to pronounce that word. Um, it comes from uh, some judge back in whenever I don't know eighteen hundreds or something, who who decreed a law that a man should not beat his wife. Dot dot dot. With anything thicker than his thumb. Um, which became known as the rule of thumb. Um, which, frankly, is quite preposterous that they'd even, you know, make that a law. Because what a man chooses to beat his wife with should not be limited by the government at all. They should have no say in what a man chooses to beat his his betrothed with, his beloved, his, his wife, his spouse. It's up to him what he uses to beat her stupid, lying, cheating face or ribs. Personally, you use a phone book or something, you put it against their ribs, fucking punch it as hard as you can, and that way it doesn't leave knuckle bruises. So there's less evidence that you've been, you know, domestically abusing your... your Whoa! And that's the joke there, folks. That's the joke, is that I'm pro beating your wife. (laughs) Oh boy, (laughs) the fun we have beating our wives should not be limited by the government, as I say. Um, (laughs) I kid, obviously. But that's, as far as I can tell, that's true. That was the research I did in that, uh, that's where the word, or the phrase rather, comes from. The rule of thumb. Don't beat your shitty... Well, no, I guess don't be shitty and beat, beat your wife with any stick wider than your thummy thumb. Um, which, you know, is, is a fair point. Don't, don't do that. Maybe don't beat them at all. And, you know, from there you can go into, well, why, why are you going to marry someone if you're just going to end up wanting to beat them up? Maybe you should be mature and go, maybe I... I won't get married. But what do I know, eh? I'm only the only member of my family who hasn't got at least one divorce under their belt. What do I know? <laughs> Stupid old me. Stupid Ewan. Oh, that's right. Two brothers, a sister, a mum, all married at least once, all divorced at least once, all with children. Good on them, eh? Oh. <laughs> Come on, Ewan, catch up. When are you going to get married and start a family? <laughs> oh, come on, Ewan. <laughs> Go, take forever. <sighs> yeah, maybe uh, you all are not the, the ones to tell me what I should and shouldn't be doing with regards to marriage, you literally bunch of useless cunts that... 
obviously are very, very bad when it comes to making life decisions. Uh, you know, like I say, what do I know? I'm just a stupid artist guy. Ooh. Fuck me in my arse. I'll beat me with a stick that happens to be wider than your thumb. Uh, which is unfair as well, because that means uh, some men get to beat their wives with fucking branches because they might just have comically wide thumbs and good for them. But then you get like, you know, skinny, slight men going, mm, looking at their thumbs going, oh, is that it? But this guy down the road gets to use a big fuck off stick to fucking beat his wife with. Why can't I? Just because my thumbs are a little bit thinner than would be ideal in this instance. You know, it's just not fair, is it? There should be a standard, a standard of uh, stick beating your wife with measurement. Like with shoes, you know, oh, I spent quite some time working in a shoe store. I learned there is no global measurement of foot sizes. Everyone just goes, eh, that's about a size five or a six, that would do. And therefore, whenever you go to different places and different brands and different styles, they all have different fucking sizes because no one's gone this right here is the size of a size six seven eight shoe they all just guess and you know i don't want to talk shop <laughs> as i was once you know a part of but it's just a sign that people are fucking stupid and they've not got a clue what they're doing what a bunch of arseholes what a big fucking bunch of stupid arseholes Ooh, them, you know, my, my stupid, all divorced family, uh, you know, people who buy Apple products, <laughs> big, stupid, bloody assholes. What are you bloody doing? <laughs> uh, I hope you will die soon. Uh, by the sounds of it, we we all will, won't we? World War Three is imminent. That's exciting news of 2020. New year, new me. For a minute before we all, you know, perish. <laughs> Whoa, we should be so lucky. <laughs> no, I'm trying to be a more positive Ewan currently. Um, you know, now I've got the uh, the art grind actually in progress, as you might say. No more day job for me. I'm above that now. I'm, I'm better than the rest of you because I don't have to work a day job because currently making art money is all right. I was terrified of it and it's very early days, like literally a week in and I'm doing okay. But that could all change. You know, there's all, always room for change, always room for everything to sort of fall apart. Uh, on these, you know, the dating apps everyone uses. Yeah, I've spent my time on there, uh, obviously. Um, on some of them, they, they say, oh, answer these questions and what will you do? And, da, da, da. and one of them is like, oh, what's your, uh, your golden rule? And the one I always put was, shit could always be worse. Because, you know, when times are hard, you can always rest assured that, hey, you know, yeah, it's bad now. It's not great, but do you know what? It could be worse. So try to sort of, you know, take stock of where you are, what you've got going on, because you, you, it might not be so bad. It could always be worse, which is true. It could always be worse. But by the same token, that means it could always be worse. So as good as things are now, just remember, it can always change for the worse. You might be having fun, you might be doing well in your chosen career, etc. But don't forget, it could always fall down, collapse around you, everything could fail miserably, horribly, and everything could be worse and terrible and worse. Don't you forget it, prick. Um, you know, just keep some perspective. Stay realistic with things, you know, don't, you know. Today I'm drawing Ed, Ed and Eddie, if you can't tell already. Look, there's Ed, Ed and Ed, E. Wait, Ed, Ed, Ed and Eddie, yeah. Big Ed, double D and Ed, D. 
Uh, I know what I'm talking about. <laughs> For the last week, uh, I've been doing pretty much solidly working on commissions, which I'm very glad to be able to do. Everyone's been very supportive, saying, you and draw me a thing, you and draw me a thing. Uh, um, so I've been doing that and having almost, you know, I don't want to, you know, overstep anything. I don't want to speak out of place, but I've almost been having fun doing them, which is kind of neat, uh, which is somewhere I'm sort of, I find I'm going to have to start going now, which is working on things that are sort of more commercially viable, if you like. Um, you know, I have to do drawings and paintings that will sell because I need to make some fucking cash. Um, and that's, that's part of where this comes in. Part not. This is partly my own personal work. For some time I've wanted to do an Ed, Ed and Eddie painting. Um, Where's, where's a book? Let me get a booky book, a bookety book. Booky work, work, work. So this is my, my second art book, the paint, paint book, book of painting. There are two paintings I did, one of the Teenage Mutant Ninja Turtles and one of the Street Sharks, uh, where I drew the whole gang of cartoon characters on one page, painted them up real nice, and I got a couple of, of good pieces of work out of it, I feel. Um, two of my my, my, I don't know, maybe my all-time favourite paintings. Two paintings I'm very proud of that I like very much. Teenage Mutant Ninja Turtles and Street Sharks. Um, yeah, so whole gang of cartoon characters painted gnarlily and cool with good textures and lighting. And another gang of cartoon characters painted similarly. I was quite happy with those. Um, I had planned at some point to do one of the street, no, I already did the Street Sharks, Biker Mice from Mars. They were another uh, favourite cartoon of mine. So I thought a nice, uh, you know, painting of them would be quite cool. Didn't quite get around to it, but uh, I might still at some point. You know, like gangs of cartoon characters in a, like 90s, people like that, they might buy it. Um, so yeah, my own work, because they're nice pictures to draw and paint, and they look good, and you're left with a, a nice final product. Um, and then uh, also, hopefully, people will fucking buy them. Um, so I'll probably get, I had prints of the, turtles one i might have one up here somewhere um i don't mean i don't really need to show you it just looks like the painting i just showed you um but yeah i might get prints of the street sharks done as well and then sell all the shit if people are going to buy it i'm just pulling everything off my shelves now um and then this one yeah i've wanted to do it for quite some time a nice ed ed and eddie piece and i think people will like it enough you know they relate favorite cartoons when they're a kid that they might actually want to pay some money to own either a print or the original painting, which could be cool. Um, but, as I've said before, one of the most difficult things when drawing characters and such is figuring out just what the bloody hell kind of position to draw them in. Do I draw them in a big active position like this, or a little standing position like this? And I figure here it's sort of apt in terms of their characters, to have Ed standing, smiling, dumbly, just going, because mm, that's sort of his character. You know, Double D looking sort of, com uh, not confused, uh, worried, maybe we'll go with. Um, and Eddie looking mean and greedy, as he tends to look. Um, but, being that they are Ed, Ed and Eddie, should we do the theme tune? Ed, Ed and Eddie! Ed, Ed and Eddie, Brrr, yeah. That's the theme tune from Ed, Ed and Eddie. The drumming wasn't great, but you know, I don't, I'm not a musician, you know, I'm, a, I'm an artist, I draw, I don't music. Um, but the other one I might do is, is a painting verily, 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 and verily I say unto ye, the next painting that shall be created wouldst be, very similar to this one, 
But it would be Edna, 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 and Ednopolis with jawbreakers in their mouths because you know they look, they go big. Would you like to see some some practice sketches? Because I'd never really, really drawn Ed, Ed, and Eddie before, so I did a few practice sketches. Uh, this is straight off the top of my head, which is coming out quite nicely, I think. Aren't I bloody great? I made another sketchbook, another one of my super fold-out sketchbooks. So that's all one long thing, but it can also be used as a a sketchbook. Um, I did a previous one obviously, but this one I aim to be longer, bigger, better, uncut, like that South Park film. And here's some Ed, Ed and Eddie rough sketches. Um, yeah, you know, googled them, drew some pictures of them, various facial expressions and such. You probably recognise some of the expressions and things. The Eds, we all love the Eds. I actually, I was a huge, huge fucking fan quite late on. I never really had cable or sky or anything when I was growing up. Very poor family, you know how it is. Um, but I saw them later around college time, around the age of between 16 and 18, 19, 20 sort of ages, and I loved it. I loved every bloody second of it. I had all the seasons downloaded, then the film came out while I was at university, or a little bit before that, and that was brilliant. Loved it, loved it, loved it, but never really drew them that much, which is quite an odd thing, I think. There's quite a good one of Mr. Eddie there with a coin, a cent. Um, but yeah, so I, it's, it was nice, I think it would be nice to to work on a proper piece of Ed, Ed and Eddie art. art. I don't want to say literature, I guess I could just use the word art, couldn't I? <laughs> Imagine that. But yeah, so when they put the jawbreakers in the mouths, they could dig these, these big, they get these big bulges the sides of their head. So uh, yeah, you can see a very rough sort of sketch here. The head's there, like I'm drawing right now. And then uh, this one, even rougher with the jaw breakers. I'll put like one this side, one that side, one that side. So it's even or <coughs> whatever. Um, and I probably will uh, do a few more drawings of the heads similar to this one, just nice little drawings probably on separate pages so I can, you know, sell them because I need to make a lot of money from my artwork now, please. Um, oh, that said, I've got <clears throat> these. This is card. Uh, these are all uh, together like this. They form one sheet of card that you'd find in, uh, when you buy comic book uh, bags and boards, they say, bagging and boarding a comic book, um, where you put it in a bag with a board behind it to keep it nice and flat and straight and pristine, mint, near mint, good condition. Um, these are the boards of those cut in half because it's a nice size to do a nice little sketch on. Nice little sketch, sell them for 20, 30 pound. Um, yeah, so it'll be just ballpoint sketches of cartoon characters, probably starting with the heads. Uh, but that's like over a hundred bits of card. So potentially I can make quite a good amount of money off of those. Um, which I think is quite cool in itself because it will be a nice fun little thing to every now and again, maybe every day or two, get one of these done, build up a little collection, put them for sale online, make some money, but also uh, take them to comic book conventions, those sorts of things. If I've got lots of uh, you know, comic book characters, cartoon characters. And that's my, my aim with those, is to keep it strictly like comic and cartoon characters. So, you know, it uh, will be good for people who like that sort of thing. Baba Booey. Um, I don't know if you can tell. Well, see, I feel you may have noticed this. <laughs> May have. Uh, the last episode of the Human Science Podcast felt to me somewhat lacklustre. Like the drawing was cool, I was reviewing a sketchbook and I used that, I got some quite cool videos out of it, but ultimately as, as the podcast itself I felt suffered somewhere along the way. Um, I wasn't happy with it and that's that's ultimately the thing is if I'm not happy with it personally, in and of myself. That's sort of how I decide if it's good or not. Which is sort of how I 
figure if my art's good or not. I try to draw art that I'd want to look at, you know, um, which is sort of how I learned to paint in the first place. I painted, learned to paint by painting pictures that I liked. I saw a nice painted comic book panel and I thought, wow, I'd like to paint something like that. And then I learned to paint like that, more or less. Um, so yeah, that's, which, you know, ultimately, the doy, that's what you do, isn't it? You paint shit that you'd want to look at, which sometimes is worrisome or troublesome, I guess, because if I paint a piece I'm really proud of that I want to look at, I maybe don't want to sell it, even though I probably should, um, because I like it a lot. Because I because I wanted to like it, you know. Um, what the hell am I saying? <laughs> uh, so yeah, the last episode was was frankly less than great. Uh, my my terribly high standards were not quite met with the previous episode. So I'm trying to have this one be at least a little little better. Um, And I don't know if I should have Ed's hands on show at all. Um, so normally I'd, I'd take a couple of caffeine pills, maybe wait for them to take effect so I can feel the energy flowing, coursing through my system. And then I would, uh, you know, get on and do my podcast. But then I find, especially with, you know, maybe the more recent ones, um, halfway in or, or sooner sometimes, I feel them wearing off and I, I lose the energy and I don't know where to go. So today I popped the pills and started recording straight away. So hopefully I've got some energy up, which it seems like I have so far. I think we're doing okay for now. Mm, dear boys. Mm. Um, yeah, I think we're doing all right. Maybe I want, maybe I should mirror him. So he's leaning this way as opposed to this way, because that might, pull him in a bit more and then I will have a painted square I think here going behind them slightly going slightly behind them and have its head popping out the top it will work nicely this adds a little feeties there and there He's a chain, doesn't he? I don't know exactly where he is. It on the back? I'll stick it there. Yeah, that might work. Oh, fuck, whatever. Hmm. Not too shabby. Too shabby. Oh, fucking shut up. You moron, you know. Fuck yourself. So I'm trying to keep the energy up to make for a more entertaining episode of the podcast. <clears throat> I've already shown other things, sketchbooks and, wow, what was that? That was my lamp. There's a fire, oh no. I could hear a dog barking outside after I did that. I don't know if it was barking because I did that. Because it would be able to hear that, wouldn't it, from outside? It would hear a weird dinging noise and go, ar, 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 ar. Um, or perhaps it wouldn't. Perhaps shut up, Ewan, you fucking bloody asshole. <laughs> um, I'm going to take a wee break here. I say we, meaning, you know, little break. But also, uh, I really, really have to fucking take a piss. Um, I've got to make wee-wee, ladies and gentlemen. So I'm going to go and do that. And when, when I come back, I'll get this, uh, we'll start getting this um, light boxed. Trace it up, get it nice and ready for the paint. Um, I won't paint it this episode. I might paint it separately, but probably record it, because that would be quite a cool video in itself, wouldn't it? Nice, uh, you know, but for now, I'm going to, I'll cut here because, you know, daddy's got to go make in the toilet. I'll catch you guys in a bit, yeah. Oof, well, I don't know about you, 
ladies and gentlemen. But I feel refreshed. That's never happened to me before during the filming of a podcast, having to uh, take a wee wee break. Gosh. Um, but you know, these things happen. Shit can always be worse. Or was it a diarrhea break? Um, I guess at that point I may as well just go while I'm recording, you know. Fuck it. Shit it. <laughs> Shit it, because it's... Shit. Um, oh, how are... I hope you're all... Ugh, shut up. Ed, Ed and Eddie was, was important for me for artistic reasons also, because it sort of, along with things like um, Ren and Stimpy, they did help me realise that, like, sort of what cartoons are and should be. Because, you know, you get a lot of cartoons sort of, uh, I don't even know how to describe it. They have character models and they go, this is what the character looks like, this is how they move. But what Ed, Ed and Eddie did, especially in, um, you know, sort of post season two or three, um, the characters just got more and more rubbery as the, the seasons and episodes went on. Um, so they'd bend all over the place, you know, contort weird shapes, have weird facial expressions that you wouldn't have seen in previous seasons where they tend to keep their characters fairly on model, as it were. And, you know, the character designs develop slightly. They become, you know, a bit more loose and funny looking, which is cool. Um, and it's good to see. But, yeah, it, it sort of... It meant if I was started drawing a cartoon, you know, I'd have the typical sort of, like, trying to draw like Ed, Ed and Eddie drawings. Um, but it would make me think, you know, in a similar vein to Christians thinking, what would Jesus do? I'd think, what would the animators who, who work on Ed, Ed and Eddie do? How bendy and stretchy would they make the characters in this particular situation that I'm trying to illustrate? Um, which was good, because, you know, it loosens you up and stops you from, you know... Stagnating, that's the wrong word, but you know what I mean. Keeps your characters loose and bendy and makes you actually do shit with them rather than just, you know, like the Teenage Mutant Ninja Turtles or the Street Sharks or something. You know, very cool, good cartoons for the most part, if that's what you're into. Um, I liked them, obviously. But, yeah, the characters never sort of bended or stretched. They were all just there and they animated them sort of as, as they kind of had to. But, uh, yeah, something like Ed, Ed and Eddie, or, like I say, Ren and Stimpy, those sorts of things, where they'd all bend and stretch and their arms would be crazy noodles all over the place. Um, you know, the mouths would open crazy wide, and it'd be fun. They're fun to look at, fun to watch, fun to draw, um, which is sort of the point, really, isn't it? Um, I, you know, it's the same thing with, like, comics and, I guess, film, like any media. Different media has different sort of... Uh, manifestos, if you like, different ways of showing what they're trying to show, different methods, messages to put across. Uh, so Ed, Ed, Neddy is a bit more madcap, you could say, um, as well as you know Ren and Stimpy, obviously. Uh, whereas you know something like Ninja Turtles or whatever, it's a fairly straight-laced, story-driven, I guess. I don't know. Uh, not that any of this matters, because Fucking give a shit. But I'm just saying, they were not necessarily like hugely important to my artistic development, but they certainly did help somewhat, I feel, uh, which is good. Very good indeed. Bravo, Ed, Ed, and Eddie. Um, I had a thought as well, uh, whilst. I wasn't really on the toilet. I didn't didn't have a sit down to pee today. It was the usual, fairly standard stand pee quickly. I come back. I put my pajama bottoms on because uh, you know I pissed all over my trousers. <laughs> I didn't really, but uh, I just thought, oh, well, yeah, fuck it, get more comfortable. Um, so I did, and I am. Uh, and then whilst whilst doing the toilet. I had an idea of, as, as I have been doing, taking uh, segments from the podcast and turning them into their own videos. I could probably get um, 
an Ed Ed Nelly sketch video out of this one, which would be nice, wouldn't it? Um, but uh, taking podcast segments and releasing them on, releasing them or uploading them to YouTube, uh, you know, like sort of two to five minute sort of little videos, like trailers for the, like obviously you know I edit a trailer to put on Instagram to advertise the podcast, but you know, just little segments, little clips, podcast clips uh, to put on YouTube and then say, hey, for more of this, to the podcast, get my Patreon. Um, which again, now that I've sort of either am or have headed into the realms of actually trying to make a living from art, people have been wonderfully supportive. Um, lots more people joining my Patreon, which is just fantastic, really. It's great. Um, I'm very, very glad for all those people, very honoured um, that everyone would be so supportive. Very good indeed. Um, but yeah, ultimately, I need more. Uh, as I've said before, I think the aim for my Patreon eventually would be to have Patreon just sort of take care of my rent. Um, if I can get $700 on my Patreon every month, that's basically my rent taken care of, which is in pounds, obviously, but conversion rate. It works out that uh, that would be sufficient for my rent to be paid purely from Patreon, which leaves all the other money uh, I can get from commissions, from selling artwork. Hopefully I'll get some paid like illustration jobs here and there. Um, and that would be very handy indeed. Um, as it stands at the moment, it's on, it's on a couple of hundred dollars, which is s still, frankly, fantastic. Um, I'm very, very glad for that. Um, you know, I can't say a bad thing about that at all. Uh, it's wonderful. Thank you all for participating. I hope you're enjoying it. I'm trying to make this entertaining so that you'll stick around. Um, but that, that basically takes care of food, at least for the month. You know, about £150 or so, food for the month. It still affords me, you know, a few treats here and there. I don't have to survive off ramen alone every day. Uh, just most days. No, I, I'm, I'm all right. I'm, I'm yeah, I'm, I'm also, you know, with regards to depression, therapy, medication, I'm really, really sort of getting onto uh, a more uh, personally positive path, which is a phrase I've just coined just this second, just now. Um, I'm, I'm trying to be more confident in myself, more positive with my thinking. Um, you know, if, if I start seeing self-deprecatory behaviour and such coming, showing up, I try to diminish it or get rid of it. But, you know, it's it's a something I'm, it's a work in progress, we'll call it that. It's a work in progress. Uh, I'm not perfect at it, not yet, but uh, I am certainly am getting there. Um, so, yeah, with that, I'm trying to, you know, get everything in line, get my work, my art, trying to keep track of my finances with that, uh, make sure I've got enough coming in. I'm not spending too much. I've got enough money for food, for rent, bills, whatever, whatever, whatever. Um, and yeah, f early, early days, but it's going well so far, which, you know, I was having ridiculous fucking anxiety, panic attacks about it, about quitting my job. Just, ugh, you know, standing in the one spot in my kitchen, fucking shaking, not knowing what the hell to do because I'm not going to have a job. But, yeah, again, the support from everyone has been outstanding. Um, and uh, so far, very early days, it's looking OK. So we might be all right, folks. Things just might work out, but shit could always be worse. <laughs> uh, that old, you know. Um, so yeah, so we, we turned Ed round. Um, maybe it's better to have him sort of looking inwards because there's a slightly better shape to the piece, I feel. Um, but that's come out all right. That should be a nice piece. Like your mum. She's a nice piece, a nice piece of ass. I'd put my penis on the inside of her body repeatedly until I ejaculated on her fucking big old milk tits. Ugh. Those big old 
baby having nipples, those chewed up mother nipples. Dark, fat, chewy nipples. Oh, yeah. Everyone loves a dark, fat, chewy nipple. Oh, yes. Yeah. And that's that. Yay. Waddle dee day. Um, I guess we can ink it up. Let's use the Pentel brush pen. Oh, and I've even got a topic of discussion ready to go. So I was having a, I was going to say intercourse, a discourse with somebody. Intercourse, is that, can you intercourse mean? I think intercourse is just sex, not talking, isn't it? Discourse would be more talking. I was speaking with a client who had purchased a, a commission from me. Um, and, and the commission had a, a man's face in it, a very rugged sort of jawline. And we were talking about that and beards and whatever. And she said, that's what makes a man either a, a big square jaw or a beard. That's what makes a man a man. And for, you know, frankly, I was just glad I had at least one of those things to uh, cover my weak jawline. Um, I'm lucky enough that uh, my ancestors were big hairy fellas who could grow beards. So I've managed to do that, which is good. So in, in this client's eyes, at least, I'm a man. Hooray for me. Who bloody ray for shitting bloody me. I'm a man. Uh, a little bit sexist of her to, to go and say a thing like that, because, you know, it's not really how it works. But uh, it did make me think, well, if that's what makes a man, what is it, you would say, that makes a woman? Because, um, you know, if I was to start spouting things like that, people might get very offended by it. If I started saying, like, you know, well, big tits makes a woman. If you ain't got big tits, you're not a fucking woman. You fucking whore. Um, so that leads me to the new segment of the You and Sucks podcast uh, called What Makes Blank a Blank. Um, and both of those blanks have to be the same thing. So rather than what makes X, Y, it's what makes X, X. So rather than what makes a cat the most adorable fucking little thing on the planet, uh, it's what makes a cat a cat. And then you could say it's the most adorable fucking thing on the planet. It's what makes a cat a cat. Um, so, you know, uh, let's start off first episode of what makes a blank a blank. Uh, woman. <laughs> what makes a woman a woman? Um, tits, obviously. If a woman doesn't have tits, she's no woman at all. She's a fucking waste. If you don't have big fucking gorgeous, juicy, perky, bouncy tits, you're a fucking waste. And I don't want anything to do with you. You're not a woman. You're barely human. No one's going to want to talk to you. Fuck off, you bitch. Um... What else makes a woman a woman? Um, the ability to have children. If you can't have children, even if it's for some medical reason or, you know, uh, something had happened to you, an injury of some kind that sort of caused that you can no longer have children where before you were able, uh, then, uh, you know, tough luck, toots. You are no woman I want to speak to. I will not be spending my time talking with you. Were I to match with you on a dating app and you mentioned your inability to have children, because, you know, they say, do you want to have children someday? Um, you know, as like the in-app questions or whatever. Um, and you might have said, I'd like to, but sadly I'm, I'm unable because of whatever reason. I don't give a shit about your reasons. Um, then I'd say, well, fuck you, miss. You're not a woman. You're a poor excuse for a person. You can't even do the one single thing people are pretty much on the planet to do, which is to create more people. That's what people are for. People are here to make more people. Like the virus they are, the bacteria upon the face of the earth, upon the, the petri dish, otherwise known as the earth. The bacteria of humanity are here to reproduce, to create more of themselves to, to populate the earth until it dies, which is, you know, they're doing a pretty good job of it so far. Um, but if you can't even do that one simple single thing, 
then you're, the, you're barely human, are you? Not just not a woman, you're barely fucking human. You make me sick. Get out of my sight. Um, what else makes a woman a woman? Oh, how about... Um, I don't know, really, I haven't really thought this far ahead. But it does sort of, you know, prove my point, doesn't it? That uh, To say a man isn't a man if he doesn't have a square jaw or a beard. Quite sexist. If you put it the other way, people would be outraged. Um, a woman is a woman if... Dot, dot, dot. Or a woman is only a woman if... You know, very, very important distinction right there. Uh, a woman is only a woman if. Oh, what makes a woman a woman? Um, if she's under 175 pounds in weight. Anyone over 175 pounds isn't a woman. They're a fucking pig monster. They're a, a beast. And, and an abomination in the sight of our Lord, our Lord, our Lord, God. Uh, we all know it doesn't fucking exist. Um, <laughs> oh, come on, Pew, it's just jokes. Just joking around. Uh, what makes a woman a woman? Um, so you see my point, ladies and gentlemen, that... Uh, can't go around saying a man's only a man if he's six foot tall, if he's got a strong jawline, if he's got a beard, because that's incredibly sexist and very narrow-minded of you. Uh, what makes a woman a woman? Not saying a thing like that. Oh, that's nice. You know, after the last couple of... Uh, podcasts being you know as I said as in my opinion maybe a bit weak I was worried I might be losing my edge you know with trying to be positive with regards to you know my mental state and career and such I was worried I was like oh no what if what if I'm losing my edge what if I become fucking boring um, but don't worry because women who haven't got big tits aren't real women and you know you can say oh or well, they then children you could still fuck them if they're children well yeah you could but they don't have that sort of uh you know innocence about them you know that child does that you can ruin by doing horrible horrible things to them um also, when, when like a young, young person is hairless, it's like a pure, nice hairlessness. It's just lovely, smooth skin. You know, they've got that peach fuzz, the very, very faint little hairs on their body. Oh, lovely. But when an older person is hairless, because they've shaved or whatever, they've got like bumpy skin, red, razor burn, razor rash, whatever. Just not the same. Kids are where it's at, folks. Let's all f fuck kids. Oh, come on now. I'm just desperately trying not to lose my edge as if I ever had any of that. Yuck. Fucking. Fucking fuck. What a fucking fuck. Come on, you, and shut up and draw your picture. I should be drawing this like eight times quicker than I actually am. Especially since I'm going to be painting over it. There's really no need whatsoever to spend quite this long on the inking part of the process. Except maybe these parts, the parts that come out of this square box, which will all be painted in, uh, need to have some kind of care taken with them. Because um, you don't want inky lines everywhere outside of the page. I mean, you can cover them up, but that's a hassle, you know. Put his mouth up there, put his lip. Um, so keep those ones tidy, of course. But otherwise, 
can fucking go crazy, do whatever. Um, and speaking of that little book, let's get that all lined up nice and nice, nice. And then, of course, not on this episode, but another time, I'll get the underpainting done, and then I'll start painting it in properly with acrylics. It'll be nice. Oh, yeah. Oh, bloody yeah. So, uh, as I was saying about uh, clips, putting up clips of the podcast to entice people into, you know, seeing them when they go up, as opposed to waiting until they're for free on YouTube. Um, I think I've already got a couple from today's episode, namely the old uh, the rule of thumb bit. That'll make a nice few minute clip, won't it? Nice funny little, oh, I could put the thumbnail. Ah, the, the rule of thumb for drawing. And then people will click on it and be like, oh, what's the rule of thumb? And it'll be like, don't beat your wife. <laughs> or do, just, you know, be uh, pleasant about it. Um, and then the whole, what makes a woman a woman? Uh, that'll be funny, won't it? That'll get me some, uh, some more subscribers to my Patreon account. Um, so yeah, content, it's all about that content. Content, content, content. Let's produce content. I'm not an artist, I'm a producer of content. Um, recently, I've tried before, but I tried again recently just to see if it would work. I've tried to uh, get verified on the old Insta of the gram. Um, so you, to do that, you upload like a photo ID and give your real name and your name people know you by. And you also select like the category of a page that you have. So, you know, like creator or comedy or art travel. Blah, 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 blah. Um, I, put, I, well, I don't think they have art on there as, as an option you can choose. Um, so I, I think usually I just put entertainer. But one of them, actually a thing you can you know, mark yourself down as, is an influencer. Um, and I'm always very, very... Uh, shit, what's, what's the goddamn word I'm looking for? Uh, tempted. Very tempted to mark myself down as an influencer just for the lols. Um, so far, unsuccessful. You get a message within a couple of days. Uh, well, I don't know what happens when you do get verified. I assume they just give you the tick and say, congrats, no... Don't be a prick with it. Um, well, they should. Evidently they don't because people are. Um, but you get a message saying, unfortunately, this time you do not meet our necessary requirements to be verified. Try again in 30 days. So I might do that. I probably won't. Because um, so far I've only ever been turned down by them. Which is understandable, really. Um, I believe it works on a basis of um, how sort of in demand you are. Like if a lot of people are searching for you, if your name comes up in a lot of search results or whatever, then they might, you know, look into actually verifying your account. Otherwise, oh, they don't bother. And why would they? Um, I believe that's how it works. I've read a little bit into it. and I think that's sort of how it be. Um, and, you know, evidently, not enough people are searching for me. Shame on them. Yeah, I want to be a uh, an influencer, a creator of high quality content. Talk about fucking children. Because that's funny too. Ooh. If there are any new listeners, uh, I hope you're enjoying the show. I guess. Just understand. It's all fun and games. It's all about the art. That's all that matters. Don't focus on what I say. Focus on what I do. And what I do is fuck babies. Ooh. No, I don't. But uh, the old uh, all girls school down the road is growing more and more tempting by the day, but you know. They have told me to stay away from it, so I really should do that. 
that's a bit of an old inside joke amongst us, you know, the old Ewan fan club, the old all girls school down the road, that old chestnut. Oh, you are funny. You are fucking hilarious. Do you think I'm doing a good job of portraying the Ed, Ed and Eddie boys? I think I am, and if you disagree, you're a fat fucking idiot. Go kill yourself. Jump in front of a bus. And make us all slightly happier. Make the world a better place today. Jump in front of a fucking bus. Just because you don't like the precise kind of content I put. So what does this episode boil down to? What, what have we learned? Let's do that as a new segment on the You and Sucks podcast as well. So what did we learn today? What, if, what, if we, what can we come away with? What can we look back on this last, you know, 40, 50 minutes or whatever? What can we look back on and go, ah, yes, I came away with rule of thumb. That was one of them. We learned a thing. If you didn't already know that, that's that. If you did already know that, oh, bravo, look at you. Knowing a thing that doesn't matter. Mm. What are you, me? Ha! Uh. Um, no, that's actually a really shitty idea for a segment. Let's not do that. Oh, well, there's me talking about making sure this is all tidy outside. But his eyebrow... Mm, she... Yeah, okay, I might have to erase that. Do that either before, during, or after the actual painting of the piece. That'll be a bit we'll get to at some point. Maybe. Uh. Okay, so uh, uh, so my uh, phone memory ran out um, and was therefore unable to continue recording. Um, and I was talking for about a full five minutes before I realised. Don't I feel silly? Don't I feel like uh, the fool, the village idiot, as it were? What makes a man a man? Knowing when to stop recording because his phone's about to run out of memory. Um, don't forget Eddie's weird three hairs there. Maybe that's what's got Double D so jumpy. <laughs> um, I can't remember exactly what I had said. And, you know, for fear of uh, just repeating myself, I won't try and say any of it again. So... Uh, I'll say, until next time, folks, don't drown in piss.